Now, Mr. President, uh, I want to thank my colleague, my good friend from Wyoming, Senator Barrasso, for his work on this and other issues related to the President's health law. As a leading orthopedist, uh, I have nothing but respect for him. And as a former uh, medical liability defense lawyer, defending doctors, nurses, hospitals, and other health care providers, uh, I really appreciate really good doctors, and this is one good doctor. He and Dr. Coburn are two of the best people I've known, and great credits to the profession. But I want to thank him for his work on this and other issues related to the President's health care law. He has been tireless in his careful analysis and fair criticism of the health spending law, and I believe we are in agreement on the bill's fundamental flaws. The President and his allies repeatedly promised that the health law would decrease costs. That is not going to happen. The so-called Affordable Care Act is going to, in fact, drive up the cost of coverage. And among the biggest reasons for this inflationary impact are the taxes that will be imposed on the American people to pay for the law's $2.6 trillion in new spending. At the top of the list of senseless cost-increasing taxes is the law's tax on health insurance. It is not clear to me how the cost of health insurance will decrease by taxing it. Many people probably don't even know that this tax exists. Like most of the taxes in Obamacare, its implementation was conveniently delayed until after the 2012 election, presidential election. But this tax is coming. It is going to hurt employers and employees. It is going to be a drag on our economy, and it is going to depress wages. So I'm glad to be standing here with my friend Senator Barrasso as we introduce the Jobs and Premium Protection Act, a bill that repeals this onerous and counterproductive tax on American workers and job creators. The President speaks about the need for Congress to do something about jobs. Well, we would go a long way toward creating the conditions for job growth by passing this legislation. Unemployment in this country remains a full-blown crisis. Millions are out of work, and the 9% unemployment rate does not begin to capture the full extent of our jobs deficit. We need policies that will encourage businesses to invest and, ex and expand. Yet the health loss insurance tax does just the opposite. According to a recent analysis, in just the first 10 years, the insurance tax would impose $87 billion in costs on businesses and their employees. Revenue that could be spent on higher wages, new hires, and capital investment, increasing jobs, and growing the economy will instead go to pay this tax. And that is just the start. In the second decade, this tax will cost businesses and their employees $208 billion. It is important to understand how this insurance tax will work. Starting in 2014, health insurance companies will have to pay a tax based on their net premiums written in the fully insured market. This is the market where 87% of small businesses purchase their health insurance. It is the market where the self-employed and uninsured go to purchase insurance. So who will pay this tax? Someone has to pay it. Contrary to the uh, talking points that all too often come out of this administration, all of these new mandates and regulations are not free. Someone has to foot the bill. And ultimately, it will be those least able to afford it that are paying it, primarily small businesses and their employees will be responsible for paying this tax. When the cost of coverage goes up due to this tax, employees will pay for it in lower wages or higher health care costs. According to a recent study, the average employee with a family plan will see his or her take-home pay reduced by $5,000 over the next decade because of this tax. The American people should remember that statistic. The next time they hear their liberal supporters of the health care law talk about wage stagnation or income inequality. The cost of this tax will be felt by citizens even beyond those small businesses. The factories that lose orders because of their customers' health care costs are going up will pay for this tax. And those searching for work will feel it too because money that could go to new wages for new employees will instead go to pay for this tax and increased health care costs for existing employees. Now, this tax will hit wide swaths of the American economy with millions of businesses and individuals impacted. 
A study by the National Federation of Independent Businesses shows that this tax alone will lead to a loss of 125,000 to 249,000 jobs between now and 2021. The legislation we are introducing today will help to reverse this trend. Ultimately, all of Obamacare must be repealed. I am fully committed to uprooting it in its entirety. It undermines our Constitution and it undermines personal liberty. It exacerbates the nation's debt crisis by creating and expanding entitlement spending. And it also undermines our economy, destroying existing jobs and preventing the creation of new ones. The people of Utah and people all over the United States need a jobs agenda. Repeal of the health insurance tax through the Jobs and Premium Protection Act we are introducing today would do much to address the scourge of unemployment and get our economy moving again. Mr. President, I yield the floor. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President uh, first, I would like to congratulate and thank my colleague, uh, the senior senator from Utah, Senator Hatch, for his continued leadership in the issue of, of health care. Uh, as the ranking member of the Finance Committee, he has been a uh, stalwart uh, and strong uh, supporter in efforts to get health care for American people, health care that they need from the doctor that they want at a price they can afford. And amazing in his fight against what uh, this body and what the House of Representatives and what the President has uh, forced onto the uh, people all across this country, uh, which to me has been uh, bad for uh, patients, bad for the providers for those patients, uh, the nurses and the doctors who take care of them, and then terrible for the taxpayers. And that's why week after week, uh, Mr. President, I come to the floor to give a doctor's second opinion about the health care law and why I'm so uh, pleased to be here with my colleague today to join in the introduction of uh, this piece of legislation. Uh, because as people all around the country know, who's listened to the many speeches during the debate on health care, that uh, the President and Democrats in Washington promised the American people that this trillion dollar health care spending law would lower health insurance premiums. I mean, that's what the President promised, that health insurance premium costs would go down. Well, the American people have now had 19 months to review what is in the health care law. They are finding out that the President and the Washington Democrats sold them a bill of goods. On September 27th of this year, the Kaiser Family Foundation issued its annual survey of employer-sponsored health insurance premiums. The report showed that employer-provided health insurance premiums rose, went up, didn't go down, but rose $1,303 for an average family last year alone. Remember, and we do, the President repeatedly promised his health care law would reduce average annual family premiums by $2,500. The exact opposite of what the President has promised has occurred. The Kaiser Family Foundation report shows significant premium increases, not savings like the President promised. Not only are premiums continuing to climb, but the President and Washington Democrats paid for their health care spending law by imposing billions of dollars in new taxes on American business and American consumers. Independent experts agree. They agree that these taxes only serve to increase an individual, a family, or a small business's cost to buy medical coverage. Specifically, Section 9010 of the health care law creates a new over $60 billion tax on health insurance plans starting in 2014. The health care law slaps this tax on all health insurance companies based on net premiums, net premiums in what is called the fully insured market. This means that the tax an insurance company must pay is equal to the percent of their market share. The larger the insurance company's market share, the higher their annual health insurance tax becomes. The aggregate tax in 2014 is $8 billion, climbs to $11.3 billion in 2015 and 2016, eventually reaching over $14 billion in 2018. After that, the law mandates that the health insurance tax grow by premium inflation. More inflation, higher taxes. Former Congressional Budget Office Director Douglas Holtz-Eakin released a study on 
in March of this year, estimating that the health insurance tax could exceed $87 billion between now, between 2014 and 2020. Now, some on the other side of the aisle want to message this tax as a, quote, health insurance fee. I would say to my friends all across this country, do not be fooled. This new tax directly hits small businesses. The Joint Committee on Taxation makes it clear that the insurance tax will be borne by consumers in the form of higher prices, by owners of firms in the form of lower profits, by employees of those firms in the form of lower wages, or by other suppliers to the firms in the form of lower payments. Remember, this tax only hits health insurance companies that sell their products in a fully insured market. Well, as we've learned and heard earlier on the Senate floor, 87% of small businesses buy their health insurance in this market, this fully insured market. The fully insured market is also the place that uninsured individuals and the self-employed go when they need to purchase medical insurance. Insurance companies selling plans to individuals and small businesses are the ones that are hit with the tax. Well, the new tax doesn't hit large, self-insured businesses. Ultimately, uninsured individuals, small businesses, and their employees are the ones who are going to end up paying this unfair tax. This new punitive tax will add hundreds of dollars to family and small business insurance premiums every year. Now, the, uh, the Wyoming Blue Cross Blue Shield Association tells me that a Wyoming family of four, well, they'll see a premium increase because of this tax of over $300 in 2014. In 2018, that same Wyoming family of four will see over a $500 premium increase as a result of the tax. These premium increases will have been passed through to consumers as a direct result of this health care laws tax component, what the President and the Democrats in this body have foisted on to the American public. Additionally, the Holtzik in March 2001 study proves that the health insurance tax will raise premiums by as much as 3% or over the next decade for a family of four, over nearly $5,000. What American family, I ask you, what American family can afford to see their take-home pay reduced by $5,000 over the next decade thanks to the President's new tax? Mr. President, the nation's unemployment rate stands at 9%. There are 14 million Americans, people across our country, unemployed, looking for work, struggling American families cannot bear the brunt of President Obama's new tax. A recent study by the National Federation of Independent Business found that the health insurance tax will force the private sector to shed somewhere between 125,000 and 249,000 jobs between now and 2021. More than half of those jobs, Mr. President, more than half of those job losses fall on the backs of small businesses. Two million small businesses across this country cannot afford President Obama's new tax. 26 million workers who get their insurance through their employer cannot afford President Obama's new tax. And the 12 million people who buy health insurance plans on their own in the individual market cannot afford President Obama's new tax. That is why today we introduced legislation called the Jobs and Premium Protection Act. I introduced this bill along with my friend, the ranking member of the Senate Finance Committee, Senator Hatch. Our legislation is simple and straightforward. It eliminates the health care laws punitive tax on every individual, family, and small business that chooses to do the right thing and to buy health insurance. Unbelievably, the health care law punishes individuals, punishes small businesses, the very two groups who find buying health insurance at an affordable price extremely challenging. 
why would the federal government implement policies that make it harder by imposing a tax on the products that these individuals buy? Some must believe that insurers will simply be able to absorb the tax. Well, experts tell us that that assumption is false. Here's what the nonpartisan Joint Committee on Taxation said in a letter to Senator John Kyle in June of this year. It said, quote, we expect a very large portion, a very large portion, Mr. President, of the insurance industry fee to be passed forward to purchasers of insurance in the form of higher premiums. They go on to say, eliminating this fee would decrease the average family premium in 2016 by $300 to $400. Isn't that what we want? To lower the cost of insurance for individuals? This is the way to do it. Finally, the Joint Committee on Taxation letter confirms that, quote, repealing the health insurance industry fee would reduce the premium prices of plans offered by covered entities by two to two and a half percent. Mr. President, this ill-conceived discriminatory tax must be eliminated. It must be stopped well before it starts to impact individuals, families, and small businesses. Our bill is a critical piece of pro-business legislation. It has the support of organizations including the National Federation of Independent Business, the U.S. Chamber of Commerce, Blue Cross Blue Shield Association, and America's health insurance plans. I would urge colleagues on both sides of the aisle who are concerned about the cost of insurance for families of America, who are shocked and surprised on the other side of the aisle, some in disbelief that what the President promised the American people of a reduction in premiums wasn't true, and who want to try to, in a little way, right that wrong. The way to do it is by co-sponsoring and supporting the Jobs and Premium Assistance Act. And so I thank you, uh, Mr. President, and I thank the ranking member of the Senate Finance Committee, Senator Hatch, specifically Senator Hatch, for his leadership and for joining me in introducing this legislation today. The time has come to eliminate a bad policy that not only increases health insurance costs, but also negatively impacts Americans' job creators. Thank you, Mr. President. I yield the floor and uh, recommend the absence of a quorum.